Predator SS has two different diagnostics for itself. We're going to go through diagnostic A, which tells you you must have power off of the machine before you go into this particular diagnostic. Select turntable jog and carriage jog at the same time. Keep them both pressed. As you turn on your power again, keep it held until the touch screen reads 99 and EE. There we go. We are into diagnostic A. Once you are into diagnostic A and you've got your EE on the touch screen, put a pallet on your turntable or some kind of item that you may block the system photo eye. Because part of the diagnostic is to make sure that photo eye is working. At this point here, all you have to do is press the cycle start. Turntable starts, the carriage starts. Now what it's looking for is the turntable home prox to be working. It's looking for the photo eye to be blocked by a package and then unblocked by a package or an object. It's looking for your limit switches here and here to be working. So again, it goes up to its maximum up. Even though the photo eye is detected at the top of the load, it's got to find that limit switch. Now it's going to try to find this limit switch. There's your four items it's looking for. Each sensor on the outside of the machine. If any of them have not done what they're supposed to, you will get an error code on this touch screen once it's done. If everything is working, you will get a zero, zero. Hey, which we have right there, double zeros. Now that we are into our diagnostic A, just simply press the start button. And it will go through its sensing of limit switches, photo eyes, and proxies. the top limit switch, plus the photo I should be unblocked by the package, sends it back down. Carriage reaches the maximum down switch, has not been triggered, has not triggered the safety switch here. Now it should come in, turntable comes into home, and we've got an error four, which is your package photo eye. So now we'll have to look and see what the problem was with the photo eye, which is mounted right here. And it looks like in this case, somebody put a piece of tape over the photo eye so it never got to do what it was supposed to. Remove the tape. As other cases may be, the photo eye had a, a wiring problem, had a sensitivity problem, but uh, in this case, we had a piece of tape over it. Let's run into that test again. Simply turn off your machine, make sure your stop is out, put your hand fingers on the uh, both jog buttons, turn the power on, hold it in until you get EE. -E. Now it's ready to run again. Let's see if we fixed our photo eye problem. To do it quicker, you can trigger it yourself. Back down to the bottom. Turntable procs has got to find its home. We have E4 again because when I stopped the carriage here, the photo I never got a chance to change its state. That's what it's looking for, the, the light to be on and off once it gets above and then come back down on it. It needs to change state. So again, we'll go through it. Turn your power off, press your jog buttons, turn your power on, wait for the EE. -E. Press your start. That's why it's always better to let the machine do the test itself. Now the photo eye has truly gotten above the package.
zero, zero. Every switch is working, including the photo I know. Now we're doing another one of the diagnostic A tests, pressing the start. Carriage reaches the bottom. Let's wait for the turntable prox to sense that it's at home. And we're waiting. And we're waiting. The turntable proximity switch is obviously not sensing. So the turntable will just keep rotating and rotating during this diagnostic A, which gives you your E3 error. All right, we finished out our diagnostic A test. We've got our double zero, which is what we want. So once this diagnostic is complete, you simply push in the stop button to leave the diagnostic test. Pull it back out. You've got your double dash. Now the system is ready to have your wrap mode selected and pressing start once you've attached your film. That's how you leave the diagnostic, pushing in the stop and pulling it back out. Okay, okay now we'll take you through diagnostic B. Same setup, you have the power turned off. Except here you push top and bottom wrap counters, have them pushed in while you turn on. You see the screen go through, it's 99 and an EE. You're into diagnostic B. As you can see, our, our machine is at its home position. The turntable is home, the carriage is home. So as what you're getting right now, it breaks it down with A1s, B1s, C1, D1, so on and so forth. So what you're seeing on the screen here is that the photo sensor is, is seeing a package, which of course we have a package on the turntable. The carriage is at its bottom limit switch, which is the home position for it, and the turntable proximity switch is at its home position. The turntable's at home. These three are all working right now. We can tell just from having the machine at home that is working. The banding button is E1. You will see it come on right here as I hit your banding button does work. I'm just going through the diagnostics here. F1, which will be up here. If I hit the start, that is working. A1, carriage safety bar switch. I'm just going to trigger it, and right up top there, that's your A1. The switch is working. Your carriage upper limit switch, B1, along the side. If I trigger it, you should see it change. And that is your switches on the A side, or A1 side. To get the actual motors running and the start lamp to happen, select, let's say, turntable jog, press the start. As you can see, the start lamp is on the top one, A2. The turntable is, is rotating, the motor is on. The machine thinks it's on. If it's not, then you can start looking for fuses. Even though this says this is on, but the turntable is not rotating, then you can start looking at fuses. The last one is carriage motor C2, which should give you this right here. If I select carriage up, there it goes. Now you've gotten your diagnostic B indicators. You've checked each switch. Now you've checked your lights and your actual motors. They are running. I'm gonna select down. Now the motor comes back on and it's indicating it should be working. If the carriage is not, you can start looking for fuses in that area. That is it, that is Diagnostic B. Now to get out of Diagnostic B, instead of as in Diagnostic A, you push in the stop. Diagnostic B, you will have to turn off your power. So you see it turns everything off, turn it back on. You should come back on, give you your double dashes. Now you can select your wrap mode, press your start after you've done your loading of the film. So good troubleshooting hints for you is uh, to open if you're getting different sequences here on the touch screen, they pretty much will tell you which fuse is giving you a trouble. Uh, just turn off your machine, open up your safety switch here, and you're going to start looking between, again, the lights here on your info screen and indicators here. Now what I've done is triggered the safety switch here, turn on your power, and we do not get anything on the info screen. The one that controls that is this fuse here, which is fuse 37. It's missing, and that is, we're simulating that that fuse 
was bad. Now, turn off the power to your machine. Come back around, replace the fuse in these little fuse holders. Snap it into place, simple as that. Now you can turn your power back on. See what the screen does for us. At least we've got power here now, but as you see, the double dashes are blinking at you now. Something else is wrong. So you open this back up again. Fuse 36 is tucked in right in here. As you can see, it's missing or simulated that it was blown. As you see, we've got it right here. We're going to turn off power again before we go changing the fuse. And simply snap it back into place. Turn the power back on. Now your screen is working the way it should. So again, with this blinking, fuse 36, with it completely off, fuse 37. Another one of the fuses that can give you an indication of what is wrong, you turn on your power, look at your info screen, either your double dashes or your continue operation, which we're getting right here. We've got our mode, mode A selected. Press the start, and you see it's in mode A, and the machine is running. But as you look at the machine, the turntable is not rotating, the carriage is not moving. Nothing is happening for you as far as the machine goes. But according to the info screen, everything's running fine. That particular fuse will be F. To A. Now let's show you where that is. Again, I like to turn off the machine before I go in there. If you come around and look, right here, you have two fuses here. You have F2 and F2A. F2A is the one that we simulated was causing that trouble. It just will not allow a cycle to start. Here's your fuse. Make sure you've got your power off, which we do, and just snap it back into place. It's in there again. Now we can start a cycle again. Turn my power back on. Continue operation. Hit the start. Again, the, the info screen is telling you that the machine is running. We can actually physically see that the machine is truly running. That is fuse F2A. It's doing its bottom wraps right now. and it finishes out. Another indication that another blown fuse may be causing the trouble. So again, turn on your machine. Use your info screen. Try to press the start button just like you would normally do. See that you're in the wrap mode. Info says it's running. As you look at the machine, again, turntable's not rotating, carriage is not rotating. So you just turn, stop your machine, turn it off, open up the door, and fuse two, right up in here, along with fuse two A, can give you the problem with where the machine thinks that it's running, but it's not. So you turn off your power, which we have. Replace your fuse, snap it into place. Close your door. Turn on your power. It's telling you to continue the operation. We press our start. And we have an error. Back into running. There are two more fuses in the system, one for your turntable and one for your carriage. And we can show you, everything is ready here to do a wrap cycle. We press the start, now it goes through its bottom rotations. In this particular cycle, we have the bottom count set for one, top count set for one. And as you can see, the turntable just keeps rotating and the carriage will not raise. 
Our speeds are turned up to max, so it's not the speed. The possibility is that fuse one inside the control panel here is blown. So what I want to do is stop the machine, turn off the power, and open my keys again. And of course, fuse one is located right in this space here, and we have simulated that the fuse was actually blown. That is your fuse one. Simply replace it. It is one of the harder ones to reach, but not impossible. Now it's replaced. Turn power back on. And it's ready for you to continue operation. Press your start. Now your carriage, because it's already done its bottom counts, carriage just goes up right away, looks for the flow to wire descents, and continue on with its cycle. Another way to test this is to just slip, simply select your carriage jogs, because it may have blown once it was already in a halfway position. You can stop the machine, select carriage jog, press start. If it won't move in either direction, generally your fuse one is the problem. it's finished out its cycle. That was fuse one. The third fuse, F3, is a little tougher to figure that that's the problem unless you were actually in a manual function. Turn on your power. You try to do just a turntable jog. Press your start. Of course it's telling it here the indication that you've started. Mode 5 which is your turntable jog and it says it should be running but the turntable is sitting still but if you were actually in a wrap mode and press start again you get the same indications here mode A has been selected you are rotating but you see the turntable is not and we've seen this in others but if you hit carriage raise see it does work. So my carriage works, my turntable will not, whether I'm an automatic or manual. It's got to be fuse three. So turn off your power. And as you can see, fuse three located right here has a blown fuse. So we turned off the power, put in a new fuse, snap it into place. Turn your power back on and close your door. Select which wrap mode you wanted, or if you wanted to do just manual turntable jog, press your start. Turntable is working again. If I want my carriage to go back to its home position, I can either go up or down. Select turntable carriage down. Finish out the cycle myself. Once it's reached its home position, I can stop the turntable. We've replaced fuse three. That is what's allowing your turntable to drive. Now, if you notice that the turntable is rotating, but it's rather slow, especially on heavier weights, uh, what we suggest is that you check the tension on the turntable drive. It is right underneath this cover. All you need is a screwdriver. Rotate this over. If you take a close look here, the reducer mount plate is slotted on all four spots. Loosen these up with a wrench, and all you have to do is adjust this for your in or out, depending on if it's too tight or too loose. That is all there is to the adjustment. When you set your roll of film on, you really want to get this arm setting level with the roll of film. And of course, depending on how much core you have showing, you may have to adjust this here and there. But most people, once you, you get an order of film, it's gonna be this height. You set this, and then you can leave it be, and then you just open and close this as you, as you load a new roll of film on. As you can see right inside of here, 
this bracket has been slotted so that you can adjust it up and down to get a nice level. And as we, you can see, we're pretty much, for this particular film, at the top of this slot. So you hold this down, bring in your Allen wrench, tighten one down, tighten one of the others. And tighten your knob assembly. See if it's level. If it's not, you've only got the two here to loosen back up. Adjust it some more. If you cannot get it level using the top one, same type of assembly down below here. It is slotted. You can just see the slots. You can loosen this one and adjust it to give you more adjustment here. Most people tend to use just this adjustment. But if you need more, it's there. To do any service on the stretch head here, all you need is an Allen wrench again. Loosen up these two here and here. Keep here. Once you pull on this, what you just did was release this screw from the end of this shaft here. From the end of this shaft, it just slides right into this. So all I did was pull this after the bolts were out and then you can take the cover off. That's getting that off. Now you remember the on-off switch here. What it's doing, see how it's offset? It triggers right on here, and as you can see, it just pulls that away from this disc so that this can turn free. And as you turn it to the on position, it's allowing these brushes to actually do their work and slow this down. And you're just dialing this in to increase more tension on it with the spring. Now to put the assembly back together, you can see the bolt here. You need to get it inside of that hole again. Get out of your way. So you can see it's going in there now. And you can release this back into position. Put it back towards less. holes line up, you put your screws back in. Yep. And of course, once your screws are in, you want to make sure that you've got it in. In order to get it in right correctly, that you have done it correctly, you can turn this on and off to see the difference in the change in the spring, that you know that this is triggering that, that red bar correctly, and at that point there, you can finish tightening down. And lastly, to make sure that this is not sitting here, pops into place. It means you've got the hole and that screw going in correctly. It's all lined up. And as you can see, it starts to tension up the spring, which tensions up your film stretch.